I rep love shot gang. JPB. Stay on that exclusive tip. Y'all be on that foolishness. If y'all had the chance, probably wouldn't know what to do with it. What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Reshades, repping Boston Mass, and this is a moment with me, Reshades. Okay, every every time somebody asks me this, I'm like, are you ready for it? Because this is sort of weird. It's, uh, you know, it's sort of like, so I'll just start from here the best way I know how. Uh, I grew up an only child, um, which serves for my huge imagination. Uh, my father used to be in a rap group back in the day and I used to try to emulate him all the time so uh, my parents bought me this karaoke machine they actually bought me two and I used to always make these mixtapes and because I was the only child I would have to be these different personalities so I would name myself I think one crew was Mickey Mouse gang crew the other one was Rocco and Faiso and then I said there's this new chick coming out named Red Shades um, now now, Red Shades came from my aunt taking me to this this hair store that used to sell these cheap little glasses uh, for like, I don't know, five, ten dollars. And she told me to pick a pair that I liked. And the only ones that uh, caught my eye, obviously, were the Red Shades. Red's my favorite color, as you can see. So it's like, every, everything's red. All I see is red. So I picked those up and I went home and, you know, my parents used to always see me in the room and they were like, you know, what are you, what are you doing? And I'm like, shh, I'm, I'm recording my mixtape. Like, this one about to be hot red shades about to come out and for some reason with that name it always stuck with me and i started telling people like call me red shades like i'm red shades and they're like okay well i grew up in mission hill uh roxbury that's in boston massachusetts uh i would like to call my neighborhood or my hood as a very mixed community there was a little bit of everybody there and boston's very multicultural anyway so you had uh people from my family from my background such as uh jamaicans and then my other side you know on uh, us northerners and um you know people from the middle east and just everybody hispanics latinas like just everyone was there especially in mission hill um there was a lot of activity going on there was a school right down the street from where i used to live uh there was a bunch of places to eat the train station right in the middle of the of the hood and just it's a little bit different now but growing up you you know that's what we used to have a lot of stores a lot of things to do um you know what i thought that i was serious about a music career from the moment i was seven years old uh, i was trying to convince my dad so much uh, i was like listen to i said listen to this new rap i wrote and uh he used to listen to me and he was like okay he was like you know i couldn't really put words together too well back then but i was trying and that's all that matters uh and so i waited a few years and um i was like you know i'm gonna get him to listen to me i said he's gonna listen to me i said i'm gonna write something that's gonna blow everybody away um and i always had you know talent uh when it came to entertainment i was always performing in the family always playing musical instruments uh recording people always like i always had that inner director in me which is why i'm trying to pursue that as a career now as well and um when i turned 12 i started uh dipping into poetry and um i never used to let anybody hear it but i would always write in my diary in my room and i was just always writing to express myself because again going back to being the only child um there wasn't really too many people my age that i could speak to if my cousins weren't around so um one day by accident i ended up spitting one of my my poems in in class but i spit poetry like it was rap so i guess you could call it spoken word and uh the kids were just blown away and i'm sure it wasn't even that dope but because I, we were 12 and 13 like people were just like yo she's yo she's better than so and so and whoever was out at the time and so you know that got me in i'm like oh i'm nice like i'm like you know what i'm saying i was like okay so um from that point everybody was like listen to her rap listen to her spit a poem it was poems at first and so i was 14 and i went back to my dad and i said okay listen to what i have and he was like oh that's good he was like you know you really got better with your wordplay and blah 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 things like that and um but that response wasn't good enough for me i was like he don't believe me yet i said you know what all right cool so i was 16 and um youtube was around so i started utilizing i said okay i'm gonna get somebody to listen to me i started putting i put one video on youtube when i was 16. so um 
it was called it was a song called get amp it was my two cousins from macon georgia were in the video we were just sitting on a couch i made the beat because i used to produce back in the day and uh we just we just started rapping our little verses and um you know it got a lot of good uh feedback online and you know again people are just like oh that's cute you know they doing their little thing in the room but when i turned 18 that's that's when it was a problem this is when other people started liking me and started telling me you know you got talent like you can rap like this girl can spit so i went to because my dad always told me two years before that when i was 16 he was like you're good and i like what you're saying he was like um but when i think you're really ready that's when i'll start putting my money into you and so come back to me with your with your best work and then we'll and then i'll take it serious so I told him I said daddy I said I'm ready I said can you please listen to this verse and I forgot what the verse was but um I spit it to him and he looked at me in the car and he looked and he said you're ready he was like no you're ready he was I said for real I said it took me like 11 12 years to get you to be like yeah I was like I'm really trying to like I'm really trying to spit like whatever so he was like yeah she's got I don't have to write for her like he was like nothing like you just got it and it's funny because I looked I looked up to them uh, to his group it was called Killerfield um and you can still find their video online and i used to rap just like them because you you emulate who you hear like things that you know so you know the lost boys nas big like gangstar you know all those people and i i was rapping exactly like them until i found my niche you know i found my subject what i did i said you know what let me just rap about the stuff that i do maybe people will gravitate towards me you know what i mean because i just do regular stuff i'm just like everybody else so I started rapping about things that I like, things that I did. And, um, you know, when I was younger, it wasn't much. But as I started growing older and becoming a young woman and start going through real things and struggle and seeing what life was like, getting a little taste of life, I had more things to write about. And so now people are like, you know, yeah, you know, I'm feeling her and I'm surprised. I'm like, they like me. They really like because I think I'm a little weird child, you know, be in my room. That's I made my whole first mixtape in my bedroom on Cool Edit Pro and Adobe Audition. And people and the sound was horrible, by the way. So shout out to everybody that was playing my music. No and the sound was horrible and uh they really liked my music I, maybe it was because they saw potential in me and i and you know and i was happy that somebody had the vision that i had for myself because um i really believed in myself i still do but you know i had some some uh, mishaps and some you know some dark days but you know now you know i'm excited like you know i feel like um I almost feel like a new artist because the world doesn't even know me yet. Just a you know a small little bit of people. So now that I have more to say and I'm I'm growing with my with my lyrical ability, I'm you know I can't wait to show you guys what's up next. So yeah. I'm in Pittsburgh, right here. You know, we traveling, we coming to see all the homies. We're right, see, and I haven't performed as much as other artists have. So I remember the shows that mean a lot to me. And if I would have to pick one show that was my favorite that I felt like I gave my all to, it was definitely the all female hip hop showcase in Pittsburgh, thrown by no other than a button pusher. She reached out to me on uh, MC Lights Hip Hop Sisters. It's still out, hiphopsisters.com. It was a community for a bunch of female rappers, poets, writers, anything. And everybody just came together and she approached me and she said, I have a show coming up and I would like you to be a part of it I like your music and um, I've never done anything like that before at this point and um, you know at that point and uh, I brought it to my father um, who's also my manager and I said you know she wants us to perform at this show I'm like I would love to do it but how are we gonna get there and by my surprise he was like we'll drive there he was like get your hype woman let's go and we're gonna do the show start practicing now so I was approached months before the show was in October. I think I was approached in the summer. So when, once we really found out that we were actually going to do it, um, we, me and my hype woman, um, shout out to Steph Mills, Stephanie Millions, we started practicing everywhere, like just everything. So we figured out the songs we were going to perform. I think we did Keep It Moving, Moving and Bad News. And um, 
you know, we just, we gave it our all and we competed for a thousand dollars and the experience was great. You know what I mean? And, and the audience, the crowd, they just showed so much love. It was, it was almost surreal for me because I was like, wow, I could, I could uh, get used to this. You know, people screaming my name. They didn't even know who I was and they were screaming like I was, you know, I don't know, Queen Latifah or somebody. They was like, oh, I was like, you know, that's great. See, I went to school for a film and video with a minor in sociology. Um, just graduated in May of 2014. And um, like I said, I've been very, I've been musically inclined, but I'm very, I would say that, um, you know, my passion also lies within entertainment, whether that be movies, music videos, anything that has to do, they all, they all come together and connect to me anyway. If you're if you're a rap artist, a singer, anything, you're gonna need music videos. If you wanna invest in yourself and you wanna kill two, three, four birds with one stone, why not teach yourself how to do something that you're gonna need anyway? Utilize your other talents, you know? So, and, and this wasn't something I was doing, oh, so I didn't have to pay for a videographer. I, I really, always loved movies I always watched the behind the scenes I always wanted to know how something was put together how they get this special effect how they do these stunts and it just always it just always amazed me it just I was always just captivated by a movie set and music videos you know that's why I have my company 369 music group and my film company is Kimora Lens Productions and you know it's still expanding and it's something preliminary right now but I, that's my dream and years from now you'll hear about us and you'll know. I started writing a few bars and the first bars was, where you been girl? Damn, since you left, I ain't really heard nobody as nice. What you do? Did you graduate from school? There's some rumors now that you take flights. So, you know, we said, we, I said, okay, I gotta keep going with this. So I was like, I'm just playing. I was like, I'm not, I haven't wrote a song in like a year. Um, I was like, so whatever, I'm just gonna leave that there. I wrote it to this beat that I heard. I wrote it, I wrote it to this beat that I heard that I really liked. And, and uh, I was like, yo, this got this jazz, this jazz um, melody in the back. And then the 808s are just bumping crazy. Like the beat was just crazy for me. And it just, it was like, you know what? Tell your story, Red, tell your story. So this song, it's not released yet, but it's called Relapse uh, by none other than your girl Red Shades. And when you hear it, it'll answer all your questions for people that have been following Red Shades. Anything, anything that you wanted to know, anything that you was unsure about, it says it in the song, you know. Website, so go to chillinintheshade.com, find me on Twitter, at Red Shades 1, Facebook, Instagram, Red Shades 1, or simply just Google me. And Definitely, I got a shout out to the button pusher. Got a shout out to Andrew Woods. Shout out to all my people back home. God, parents, my grandmothers, you know, everybody in the music industry trying to do their thing, especially the independent music industry. And everybody that believes in me, I love you and thank you so much. Where you been, girl? Damn, since you left, I ain't really heard nobody as yeah, nice. What you do? Did you graduate from school? There's some rumors now that you take flights. You looking good, see you back on the market when you pass, everybody looks twice. It's all love and I know you grown up, but damn, will you pick up that mic, alright? Uh, I did now, so thanks for asking. Was in a dark place and I lost my passion. Embarked on a journey where the music didn't concern me. I didn't care about nothing, I don't know what happened. Feeling under pressure, confidence was lacking. And it's probably cause my ex lost all attraction. And damn, that's a tough pill to swallow. Only thing I could do is drown in my sorrow. Nah, fuck that shit. I can never... I rep love shotgun. JPB.